Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the fifth video in the series on radiographic technique. This is the fourth and final part on the set of videos on contrast media. We'll be wrapping up this arc on contrast media by looking at how idiosyncratic reactions occur. In the last video, we learned how dose-dependent reactions occur due to contrast media targeting specific organs. What about the dose-independent reactions? Remember, in the second video on contrast media, we stated that dose-independent reactions are unpredictable and can occur with no known predisposing factor and at doses that are harmless to most patients. Even though it is true that we can't predict dose-independent reactions, experts believe there are certain mechanisms that lead to them. Five mechanisms that are believed to cause dose-independent reactions include histamine release, complement system activation, enzyme binding, chemotoxicity, and anxiety. Let us look at all these in detail. First is histamine release. Our blood contains something called leukocytes, or white blood cells as they are more commonly known. They help to protect the body from infections. Types of leukocytes in the blood include mast cells and basophils. These cells are found in many areas of the body, the skin, intestines, heart, respiratory system, and so on. They protect the body from germs and allergens by releasing chemicals that would help to destroy these germs and allergens. Occasionally, these cells can recognize contrast media as an allergen when it is introduced into the body. This causes the cell to release their destructive chemicals, one of which is histamine. If you've ever taken a course in pharmacology, you would have heard that histamine is a mediator for inflammatory reactions. This means that histamine can cause inflammation. So, when contrast media causes mast cells and basophils to release histamine, inflammatory symptoms are experienced. These include itching, a reddening of the skin known as flushing, metallic taste in the mouth, edema, hypotension, bronchospasm, and arrhythmia. We already pointed out that idiosyncratic reactions like this can occur in any random situation. It has however been observed that reactions due to histamine release occurs more often when highest molar contrast media that contains megalamine is used and in patients with a wide history of allergies. Next is activation of the complement system. The complement system is another part of the immune system. It is made of certain proteins. What it does is that it boosts the ability of white blood cells to destroy germs and allergens. In the normal state of the body, when there are no germs or allergens, the complement system is inactive. But once an injurious stimulus occurs, the system is activated. An example of an injurious stimulus is damage to the inner lining or endothelium of blood vessels. And do you know any chemical that can cause this damage? Contrast media. Contrast media can cause damage to the endothelium of blood vessels, leading to activation of the complement system. When the complement system is activated, it mediates the formation of chemicals like kinases, fibrinogens, and degradation products. These chemicals also cause inflammatory reactions like histamine. Like we have stated, the complement system is normally in an inactive state. This is because of certain chemicals called the complement system inhibitor. An example of these chemicals is the C1 inhibitor, which helps to prevent the complement system from being unnecessarily activated. This is why idiosyncratic reactions due to complement system activation occurs more often in patients with a low level of complement system inhibitors. Also, because highest molar contrast media is more likely than lowest molar to damage the endothelium of blood vessels, more complement system related reactions occur in highest molar contrast media use. Another way through which experts believe dose dependent reactions occur is enzyme binding or enzyme inactivation. Do we remember what enzymes are? They are practically proteins that regulate how fast chemical reactions occur in the body. Processes like the breakdown of food and buildup of energy are chemical reactions. Enzymes make sure these processes do not happen too quickly or too slowly. One example of an enzyme is acetylcholinesterase. It ensures that the neurotransmitter, acetylcholin, is broken down into an inactive form. This is good because, when there is excess acetylcholin in the body, certain negative effects, called muscarinic and nicotinic toxic effects, are experienced. Now, contrast media is a weak binder of proteins, it can bind to the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. When it binds to the enzyme, it renders it useless. The acetylcholinesterase will no longer be able to break acetylcholin down. What this would cause is a buildup of excess acetylcholin in the body, leading to muscarinic and nicotinic toxicity symptoms. Examples of these symptoms are vasodilation, bradycardia, hypotension, bronchospasm, diarrhea, blurry vision, and urticaria. 
Even though this can happen at any unexpected time, high as molar contrast media is a greater protein binder. This is why more idiosyncratic reactions due to enzyme binding occur in use of high as molar contrast media. We should also point out that compared to histamine release and complement activation, this mechanism is less likely to occur. Next is chemotoxicity. Over the past videos, we have talked about how the osmolality of contrast media determines whether or not a reaction will occur. There are other properties of the contrast media that also play a role. One is the electrical charge of the particles in the contrast media. This electrical charge can cause symptoms like convulsion and cardiac arrhythmia. There is one more way by which idiosyncratic reactions can happen. This is anxiety. An anxious patient will have a more activated sympathetic nervous system. When contrast media is introduced to such a patient, the sympathetic nervous system is further stimulated to an extent that it is overactive. Symptoms of an overactive sympathetic nervous system include dyspnea, excessive sweating and diarrhea. Over the last three videos, we have looked the various types of contrast media reactions and the different mechanisms by which they occur. Now, there are some options available to radiographers to help prevent a contrast media reaction from occurring. These strategies are used in situations where a patient is more likely to suffer a reaction, like in the high-risk group patient. Let us conclude this video by looking at some of these preventive measures. First is prior pre-testing. In this method, a small dose of contrast media is administered before the full dose. The patient is monitored to see if he or she reacts to this test dose. If the patient suffers a mild reaction to this small dose, it indicates that the patient could suffer a major reaction when the full dose is administered. Thus, the examination is not carried out and other options that do not require contrast media are used. Take note that this preventive method is no longer in use. This is because it has been observed over time that some patients will not react to this small dose but will go on to react when the full dose is administered. Also, some patients suffered severe reactions to this test dose. Another prophylactic method is pretreating the patient with steroids. An example of a steroid is methylprednisolone. Administering 32 mL of this orally 12 and 2 hours before giving the contrast media prevents inflammatory reactions. Next is pretreatment with antihistamines like Puritan. Earlier in this video, we discussed how histamine released due to contrast media causes inflammatory reactions. Antihistamines prevent histamines from doing this. Another method of preventing contrast media reactions, a very potent one, is using lowest molar contrast media instead of the highest molar types. As we have stated before, far more reactions occur with highest molar contrast. Lastly, we already pointed out anxiety as a potential cause of reaction to contrast media. This means that, by reassuring and reducing the anxiety of a worked-up patient, the chances of a contrast media reaction occurring due to anxiety is that puts an end to the discussions on contrast media. We move on to another exciting aspect of radiographic technique in the next video. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.